Look at the picture over here. As you can see, it shows Sachin Tendulkar, who has a batting average of 44.8. Now, when you watch cricket, you must have often come across the term batting average or bowling average. Now, what does the term, for example, in this case, batting average mean? The batting average basically tells us how well a batsman is going to perform the moment he steps onto the pitch for a particular innings. So over here, I can say that Sachin Tendulkar, who has a batting average of 44.8, will make somewhere in between 40 to 50 runs on an average when he steps out onto the pitch the next time. So this actually is a measure of how well the batsman is going to perform in the next innings and how well he has performed in the past. How is the batting average found out? The batting average is found out by summing up the entire runs that the batsman has scored in his career till that date divided by the total number of times he has been dismissed. So that gives us the average score. Now what have we studied about average? The average of any particular data set is also known as the mean. So how can we define mean? The mean or the average of a number of observations or a data set is the sum of the values of all observations divided by the total number of observations. So mathematically, mean is given as sum of values of observations divided by the total number of observations. Mean is usually represented as x by and a bar at the top. And this is read as x bar. So x bar represents mean. So now let us consider a scenario. Over here, a teacher has conducted a surprise test on a total of 10 marks of certain number of students. Here the number of students are 20. Let us find out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So there are 20 students who have obtained the respective marks on a total of 10, as you can see. Now the teacher wants to find out how well the class has performed on an average, or what is the average score of the class. So to find this out, what does the teacher do? The teacher calculates the mean of the marks. So let us find out how it is calculated. So as I have mentioned previously, mean is nothing but the sum of values of the observations divided by the total number of observations. So if I have to find out the sum of values of these observations, what do I do? I simply add them one by one. So I get 8 plus 6 plus 4 plus 6 and I go from left to right so that I don't miss out any particular value. So 8 plus 6 plus 4 plus 6 plus 5 plus 9 and so on. Thus, I add up these values and these values add up to 124. You can add these values yourself and find out that these values on adding adds up to 124. Thus, 124 is the sum of values of the observations. This is represented by sigma xi. Now, what does xi represent? As you can see, the variable that we are considering over here is marks which is represented by x. And when I say xi, I mean a particular variate. So if I say, for example, x1, it means the first variate, that is 8. If I say x2, it means the second variate, that is 6. If I say x18, it means the 18th variate, which is 6. So that is the meaning of xi. And when I place this symbol, in front of xi, which is known as sigma, it means that I am summing the values of xi. Or in other words, I am performing the addition x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 and so on up till x20. So this, in short, is represented by sigma xi. Now we have found out that the total number of students who took the test is 20. So now how can I find out the mean? The mean or x bar will be nothing but 
124 divided by 20. So, sigma xi, that is 124 divided by 20, that is n, gives me a value 6.2. So, the average score of the class is 6.2, which the teacher found out very easily. So for this, I can also draw a frequency distribution table in the following manner. I take xi or the variates, that is the marks obtained by the students in the first column. And in the second column, I write the respective frequencies. Now we found out one way of finding out the mean. Let us find out another way in which the mean can be obtained. So I have the same data set or the same observations. Now. I construct a third column that is FIXI or in other words the frequency of a particular variate multiplied by that variate. So in the first case FI is 1 and XI is 0. So on multiplying 1 and 0 we get 0. Similarly for the second case I get 1 into 1 this into this that is 1. Moving on, I get 4, then 10, then 24, then 7 into 5, 35, then 8 into 4, 32, and lastly, 9 into 2, 18. Now, we have previously seen that the total number of students who have taken the test is 20, which is nothing but a sum total of the frequency of the respective variates. Now, I have found out fi xi. So when I have found out fi xi, I sum this column as well. So when I sum this column, I find I'm getting a value of 124. So with the help of this value, I can also calculate the mean. And this method is known as direct method. How? If I consider the summation of fi xi, that is this value, after adding up all the respective values, divided by sigma fi, that is the total number of students who have taken the test. On doing this, I will get 124 divided by 20, which is nothing but 6.2 or the same value which I had obtained earlier as the average score of the entire class. So this method of finding out the mean by dividing the summation of xi, fi xi by sigma fi is the direct method. Thus, we found out the mean with the help of direct method. Now consider a case where finding out the mean with the help of direct method won't be as easy. When will that be? If the value of the variate is very large or in other words if the value of the frequency is very large or both are very large. So in this case as you can see the value of the variates are quite large, 140, 145, all three digit numbers. So if I have to multiply xi with fi, that is 140 with 4 and then 145 with 2, these calculations are going to be time consuming and solving the entire sum through the direct method is going to be a tedious task. So this is why we employ the shortcut or the deviation method. Now the shortcut or the deviation method as the name suggests is a method which will help us solve this sum in a shorter amount of time. So let us find out how. Firstly, we assume a quantity that is known as the assumed mean. Now the assumed mean is usually assumed to lie somewhere in between the given variates. So for this case, as you can see that these two are the middle values we can consider any one of them as the assumed mean. So when I am solving this sum, I will assume that 150 is the mean or the assumed mean. So now I have taken 150 as A, that is the assumed mean. Now I construct two different columns. The first column beside the variate column is DI, which is equal to XI minus A. Or in other words, each occurrence of di will be equal to each occurrence of xi minus the assumed mean. 
So let us find out how I can fill up the column di. For the first case, xi is 140. So di will be 140 minus a, that is 150. So 140 minus 150 is minus 10. Similarly, for 145, the corresponding value of di will be 145 minus a, that is 145 minus 150, that is minus 5. Similarly, moving on, minus 2. For 150, di will be 150 minus 150, because 150 is the assumed mean. So di will be 0. For this, di will be 1. And for this, di will be 5. Now I have obtained the values for di and then I multiply the value of di with fi. So minus 10 into 5 gives me minus 50, minus 5 into 2 gives me minus 10, minus 2 into 3 gives me minus 6 and so on. Now this gives me fi di or the multiplication of each occurrence of frequency with each occurrence of d. So I get fi di and I sum up this entire column. So after summing it up, how can I do so? I find that 6 is occurring both in the positive and negative and so is 10 occurring both in the positive and negative. So I can cancel them out and what I am left with is minus 50. Similar manner, I add up the column fi and I get 25. So the number of observations is 25. In this case, I can find out mean with the help of this particular formula. That is A, that is nothing but the assumed mean plus sigma fi di divided by sigma fi. Sigma fi di is given to us as minus 50. That is the summation of the column fi di. And sigma fi is the summation of column fi. Thus, I get A, which is 150, plus sigma fi di, which is minus 50, divided by sigma fi, that is 25. So this gives me the actual mean. So if I take out the common factor, which is minus 2, I will get 150 minus 2, which is equal to 148. So as you can see, the actual value of the mean, that is 148, is quite close to the assumed value of mean, which we had taken. That is the assumed mean. So as you can see, it did not involve any large calculations with these three digit numbers. The calculations involved were pretty easy and it took a much less amount of time. This is why this method is known as shortcut method. So now you will be arguing that initially by the direct method I had said that the formula for mean is this, but in this case we find that the formula for mean is this, which is quite different from the direct method formula. So you might ask me a question that how are these two same? Well. Why don't we find out? Firstly, we write the value di as xi minus a. That is the formula for di. And then I rewrite the mean equation as mean equals a plus sigma fi. And I replace xi minus a in place of di. So I get xi minus a divided by sigma fi. So this is the resulting equation that I get. Now I open these brackets. So what do I get? Sigma fi into xi minus sigma fi into a divided by sigma fi. Now the moment I do this, I can perform a very simple operation. Since a is a constant and is a single value, it need not be within the sigma sign. So we consider it not within the sigma sign. When we do so, we will find that in this term, sigma fi is present both in the numerator as well as in the denominator. So I cancel out 
sigma fi. So what can I write the resulting equation as? I can write it as a plus sigma fi xi divided by sigma fi minus a. Now as you can see, a is present both as a positive and negative in the same equation. So I can cancel it out. Thus I am left with sigma fi in xi divided by sigma fi, which is nothing but the equation for mean which we had obtained for the case of the direct method. So we find that this formula is one and same as compared to the formula for direct method. It is just another way of writing it which makes our calculations simpler and it takes shorter amount of time.